Hello everyone, Phoenix Tremaine here with your latest commentary on Divorce Court, Episode 8, um, Ben versus Sharp. And, um, good lord, this case was awful. And not in the sense that the episode was bad. It's, oh, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. And I will be releasing these videos Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. They're pre-scheduled on YouTube, so they're guaranteed to be <laughs> there at 8 a.m. Because um, I'm doing all these videos in advance now. Um, but this episode, it just kind of threw me back into the past. Because you'll probably figure this out as you watch these videos. I've dated a lot in my earlier years, you know. So I've dealt with lots of different personalities. And... The younger I was, the more I tried to hang in there. The older I got, the less I tried to hang in there. To the point where I eventually got to the point where I made my deal breaker list. Where these are the things I can tolerate and these are deal breakers. And once I knew what my relationship deal breakers were, I it didn't take much for me to figure out you weren't the one. So, so and a lot of people got mad because of that. But... They felt like I was judging them because, you know, they were on my deal breaker list. They were doing something that I knew long term in a relationship I wouldn't be able to handle. I'd want out. And, you know, some instances it's just a matter of been there, done that. Why am I going to keep repeating the same mistakes by dating the same type of person? So when I saw this episode, it was like a bad flashback of a few relationships I had in the past that I defined as emotional vampires. There are people out there that are emotionally unstable. They're emotionally um, just, just like I, my first note is angry woman. So angry about everything, angry about, oh my God, why are you breathing today? You know, some people are really like that that they they sarcastic and they nitpick and they've always got a problem and i remember so many times like like even when you um imagine this like you know when you're young and you want to go to the club and you've been thinking about the club all week and you've been working and you know you can't wait and then you want to get out there you want to get to the club and then you finally get to the club and then somebody starts shooting or somebody want to fight because you accidentally stepped on that shoe and, or somebody gets killed you know, it's like I waited all week just to get to the club to have some fun. And these fools out here acting a fool, you know, so you eventually learn the establishments where those people like to go. And, you know, you find the grown and sexy type places with people a little bit older, a little more common sense, where you can actually go have a good time and leave without getting robbed, shot or killed. So that's kind of what she reminds me of. It's a good time. You know, you're expecting to have a good time, but you know, it's something, something always happens. You know, it's very disrespectful to take the flight tickets and throw them on the ground because I'm not the one. You do some shit like that. And not only won't I go on a flight, you know, we're done. Deal breaker. Oh, you don't do no disrespectful shit like that to me. Because what happens is, it's the beginning of, I've always said, because men can be abusive and women can be abusive. And abuse isn't always physical. A lot of times it's emotional. I know a lot of men that are beat down emotionally. They get married and it's like a nightmare. <laughs> and they feel trapped because now financially they're trapped. And they got kids and they don't want to play child support. But they went out and that's how they end up with all these extra women mistresses because they can't stand a wife at home because, you know, and this is the phrase I tried to use in a, another video, but I lost my train of thought. But I used to say all the time, this is why I don't tolerate um, uh, drama in a relationship because I say I got, you know, chaos at work. I got you know, chaos with family. I might even have some chaos with friends, you know, but when I come home, that needs to be my place of, place of peace. 
that needs to be my place of tranquility. If I don't have peace at work, I don't have peace with family. I might have some crazy old friends who's always got some drama going on, you know, and then I come home and I got drama there. Where do I find peace? And that's how men end up with mistresses and misters if you're dealing with men. And because they're looking for that, that, that moment when people first meet and they're on their best behavior and they actually think and care about you and you know, and then your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband or whoever's at home and they always giving you drama, always giving you static, you know, you know, you walk through the door, you just work the eight, eight hour more job, wash the dishes, take out the trash. You know, you ain't even had a chance to catch your breath, take a shower, have a seat, you know, wind down from your day, but you've been here all day. Why well, wasn't it done when I was at work making the money to take care of all, all of this? Because I'm the guy, you, how heavy was the trash? Some people play roles. This is, this is the role you want to play? That's your job now. Because I'm not going to work, work eight hours on a job, then come home and work another four or five hours at home, and then I'm not finding peace anywhere. Because if I actually have my peace, then guess what? You don't have to tell me to take out the trash. Because when I come home, I'm happy. I had a chance to relax. Oh, trash needs to be taken out. I'll take it out. Okay, but if I come home to you demanding things from me and I just had bosses and whatnot demanding things from me and I've already had a headache and I've been going through it all day and then I can't find peace with you and then you got this other chick over here at work that, you know, y'all been having lunch together and they y'all have nice little talks together. She always telling you you're cute and you have a nice body and you're, you know, you're my type of guy. Um, do I want the screaming harpy at home or do I want the chick at work that's always having great, I'm always having great conversations with that even if I wasn't attracted to initially, I call this vicinity when you're at work and you're attracted to somebody you wouldn't normally be attracted to after being around a person for a while and really getting to know them. Cause a lot of times we don't get to know people. We do these apps and whatnot. And then you know, you don't really get to know the person. You kind of fast forward everything, but you're at work, you're with this person every day, or you go to the gym, and then y'all always at the gym around the same time and strike up a conversation, a nice smile, you know, go home. No, that's not what a man needs, and that's not what a working woman needs. So, just like a woman wouldn't want a man to come home from work and be like, bitch, the fuck wrong with you? All this shit all fucked up. You know, why are these kids, you know, if he comes through the door and he just explodes because he's so mad at everything that went at work and then he exploded on you before you could even say take out the trash or you're going to be afraid. You're going to be, you're going to be so scared before th that he's coming home because when he comes home, you know, he's going to let you have it. So I remember my stepfather, who's very abusive. And um, when we lived with him, he was an abusive psychopath. And his ass would take a white glove and he would go all around the house to make sure everything was clean. And if there was one speck of dust on that white glove, you know, he was abusive. He might beat my mother or anything. So you don't want to end up with that, that kind of guy in the house. I'm trying not to cuss. But... You know, that's what she kind of reminds me of is like somebody told me that, you know, a lot of people lash out at the ones that love them because they know they don't fight back. They know they're not going to hurt them. So all of that pain and anguish that they've taken from the world, they direct it at you because they feel that it's safe to direct it at you, which you're supposed to do is sit down, have a conversation this was my day. This was horrible. I can't believe this happened. You don't look for everything that's wrong in a room and then use it as an excuse to go off or want to fight or, or drink or do drugs or whatever. So 
that's what she reminded me of. Um, and then she wants him to be a mind reader. That's the other thing that annoys the hell out of me is like, I'm a person, I'm a writer. So for me being a writer, I study people. So I'm not a mind reader. And the only way I will learn your behavior, your desires, your needs, one is observation. And two is you telling me what you want and need, but then I have to remember your wants and needs so that you don't have to tell me more than once. You may have to tell me a couple of times, sometimes, but once I know the things you like, dislike, your deal breakers and the things you can tolerate, then we can interact as a couple effectively without all that drama and chaos that drives people to cheat, drives people to leave, and drives people to, cause she's gonna be a horrible baby mama. I swear, you can tell already, she's gonna be mad at the other woman. She's gonna be mad at everything. And then to be disrespectful to fried chicken, the fuck is that about? I'm trying not to cuss, but disrespectful to fried chicken is like, I know you're Latina, but I never went into a Mexican restaurant and said, oh, what's in a burrito? Oh, it looks like puke. You know what I mean? You know what I did? I tried the burrito. It was good. Try the fried chicken. If you don't like it, eat some baked chicken. It's not a big deal. So, but it's things like that is the nitpicking and annoyance that, that chips away at the relationship. And so even a happy-go-lucky person is hanging in there like him makes them vulnerable to another woman who isn't doing that. Another woman that can represent being the mother he wants for his kids because he sees, oh, she's so, she's so good with her kids and she's not hollering and the place is clean and she's not acting a fool. I wish my wife was like this. Next thing you know, you're the ex-wife and she's the wife. And you're bitter now because you chipped away at what you loved and what you had until it left and it was gone. And so now you're going to be bound and determined to make their life a living hell as long as this kid is 18 and 21. Until this kid is 18 and 21. So I really felt that she reminded me of so many people I've met in my life. And some of them I would call emotional vampires because you come in with a, with a good heart and you see someone hurting and you try to help them and they just keep taking and taking and taking from you until next thing you know, they might even be better, but you're now messed up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, or they may never get better. And they just take all of your happiness and your joy. It's like certain family members, I wouldn't want to be around because it's like when you see them, you know, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They'll be like, you know, you say, oh, hey, how you doing? It's a nice day today. It's sunny. You know, you know, it's, it's pretty good. How's things going with you? Oh, you ain't know what this, what this, you know, MF did today. You ain't going to believe this. And no matter when you see them, there's always some extra drama <laughs> that's going on in their life. And you're like, Ugh, what now? And at first you're interested. It might even be funny. It might even be something that you may even try to help out with. But after a while, emotional vampires, they don't want to be fixed. They just want to be heard. And they just want to always just take your happiness and your joy from you because they don't have any of themselves. So they steal yours. And I can see her doing that too. Um, and to say things like she don't eat black people food. <sighs> you don't know this about me, but I'm very pro black. And if you watch me on social media, you already know I'm pro black and I'm, you know, I'm pro-black, pro-gay, pro-trans, you know, pro the underdog, pro-women. So I'm pro a lot of things, but the number one thing I'm pro is black. And that's a deal breaker for me. If you ever said anything like that in my presence and you're trying to date me, oh, my inner, you know, 
pro-black person is going to be like, oh, we got a problem. Because for you to say that phrase, I know I'm going to come at you like I would a racist. And it, it won't be fun. So, and I know I couldn't date you. And I've dated people who were other races and I couldn't do it because some of the things that came out their mouth, I really couldn't deal with because of the culture clash. And, you know, and the one thing I always hated is when somebody turned me into a fetish. I'm a person, I'm not a fetish. Okay. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. But I've tried, tried, um, and I'll say this one thing about me back when I was younger, I went on this journey where I tried to date at least one person from every race and every culture. I pretty much did it because <laughs> I wanted to experience different types of people and different types of things. And there's always these crazy, like, you know, things they say about people or say about races or whatever. And as a youngin, you know, you want to find out if it's true. But as an older person, I understand that, you know, there's racism and there's stereotypes and everybody is an individual and you can't, let's say, sleep with one person in, in a particular race. And now you know how, how, how it feels to sleep with everybody in that race. No, everybody's different. Everybody has sexual fantasies, fetishes, it's all different. So people are people and you got to pe treat people as individuals. Um, the one positive thing I'll say about this episode is first off, she needs counseling because he's not a counselor. He can't help heal all of that pain and insecurity she has. She needs professional help. But that picture they showed of the family, him, her, and the kid, and them smiling, I love that. That was, gave me hope that all of my doom and gloom of how I felt about this episode, that maybe, just maybe, they might be able to come out of this in one piece. And maybe she will have had that light bulb moment, because people change, you know, she may have had that light bulb moment that, clicked and was like oh okay you know maybe i need to chill out a little bit and then make things things get a little easier so hopefully that's true i wish the best for them but her behavior just brought up so many negative images of people i've dated in the past that are all on my deal breaker list there's no way in hell like i've been in a relationship seven years eight years in february and we are so in sync with one another that, like I said, we finish each other's sentences. You know, we text each other at the same exact time. I'm not going to show you the text. But the, the text this morning was, I was just thinking about you. I was about to text you. But it's just a matter of who texts who first or who calls who first because we also call each other all day and text all day so and it's like seven years later so my model for keeping a relationship great and healthy is to always treat it like you did in the first place the things you did to get me are the things you got to do to keep me and vice versa so always always be in a relationship like you're dating you know keep it fresh keep it new keep the sex up up to date and, you know, always care about the person and their feelings and make sure that it's returned because some people are emotional vampires and it's all about them. And no matter what you're going through, they'll never be there for you because they'll always be in the middle of their own drama. So finding someone who cares about you and your feelings and your thoughts and feels you return that by make sure you do the same thing to them is the key to a happy relationship and then i pray every day that, it, that it'll continue to be happy and it'll work out and that's my other secret that i do so thank you for watching um i got one more episode to do uh review do commentary on before i go to sleep and um hopefully this is a good one so um 
I'll catch you in the next video. Every Monday through Friday at 8 a.m., there's always a new video. And um, thanks for watching.